One morning, SpongeBob was just leaving his house to go on a nature walk. As he was leaving, he noticed something strange on his street. His street was now a long train track. A train track on my street? That can only mean one thing. Then he heard a whistle. And right away, he knew who that whistle belonged to. There was Thomas the Tank Engine coming down the track. Thomas! SpongeBob was happy to see his friend. Hello, SpongeBob. Long time no see. Have you been? Oh, you know, the usual, being chased by monsters, surviving natural disasters, you know, the same ordeal. Oh, I hear you, SpongeBob. But speaking of ordeals, we need your help. My help? With what exactly? I'll explain on the way. Come on, we don't have much time. And with that, SpongeBob climbed on board Thomas and the two set off to Sodor. When they got to Sodor, Thomas took SpongeBob to Knapford Station. While there, they met an engine that kind of looked like Duck. Whoa, Duck! I love the yellow color! What? Oh, no, 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 I'm not Duck. My name is Goose. Duck is my brother. First Duck and now Goose? What a funny name. Well, my real name is Capulet, but everyone calls me Goose because whenever I whistle, they think it sounds like a goose honking. And though I much prefer my real name over my nickname, I won't get insulted if you call me Goose. Well, regardless, it's very nice to meet you, Capulet. Likewise, Mr. Um... Squarepants. SpongeBob Squarepants. Speaking of duck, that reminds me. Thomas, have you seen duck anywhere lately? Now that you mentioned it, no, I haven't. Is everything all right? Well, ever since a diesel engine named David arrived on the island, engines have been disappearing left and right. You mean there's another steam-hating diesel out there? It's not just steam engines, SpongeBob. Diesels as well. And to be honest with you, I think David might have something to do with it. Now, now, Capulet, don't start putting the blame on David because he's strange and new. You're right. I shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Then the conductor blew his whistle, signifying that it was time for Capulet to leave with his goods train. Oh, that's my cue. I have to go. It was nice meeting you, SpongeBob. Nice meeting you too, Goose. I mean, Capulet. But my question is, who the barnacles is David? Ugh, he's a new diesel that arrived on the island because we were short on engines. But come on, SpongeBob, let's head over to Tidmouth Sheds. And the two engines set off for Tidmouth Sheds. Back at the sheds, the other engines were talking when Thomas arrived. Hey guys, I'm back, and look who I brought with me. <gasps> is that SpongeBob? I think it is. Well, bust my buffers. SpongeBob, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you all, too. How are you all holding up? Not good. There's a train napper on the loose, and it's only a matter of time before one of us goes missing. I know. Thomas was telling me. Well, I, for one, am not afraid of some diesel. Gordon, we're going through a crisis. Now's not the time to boast. I'll have you know, Henry, that this is the perfect time to boast. Ugh. I mean, if Devin the Demonic ever dared mess with me, I will push him off the rails. Who's Devin the Demonic? Are you sure you want to hear the story, SpongeBob? It's a pretty dark one. How dark can it be? I mean, with Diesel 13, it can't be any worse, right? Oh no, SpongeBob. Devon is ten times worse than 13. Even though that makes no sense seeing how Diesel 13 is a much larger model. I too am curious to know the story of Devon the Demonic. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. And this was the story Henry told. Long ago, sometime in the 1950s, a BR Class 08 diesel engine called Devon was built. He was a quiet engine and mainly kept to himself. He mainly spent most of his time shunting trucks in the yards, taking them from point A to point B. But one day, he was sent to the smelter's yard on a special delivery. And that was when it happened. As the cranes were unloading the scrap metal, 
Devin watched the scrap go into the incinerator, and he enjoyed it. So much so that he began to push the trucks into the incinerator. But it didn't stop there. A steam engine was working nearby, and that was when Devin did the unthinkable. What did he do? Let's just say the engine was never seen again. Holy fish paste! That happened? I'm afraid so. Whoa, that's pretty messed up! They tried to capture him, but out of nowhere he just disappeared. Where is he now? No one knows. He left without a trace. Well, if you ask me, I believe this Devon fellow is a load of nonsense. Edward would know more, but that's all I know. Speaking of Edward, where is he? He's at the clay pits. Let's go see him. When Thomas and SpongeBob got to the clay pits, they saw Edward scolding at two twin engines. Bill and Ben, how many times do I have to tell you two not to play tricks on the workmen? Well, Ben started it. No, I didn't. That was you, Bill. Was not, was too, was not, was too. Enough, both of you. I don't care who started it. I'm going to end it. Hello, Edward. Am I interrupting something? Not at all, Thomas. I'm just trying to keep Bill and Ben in order. Edward, you'll never guess who's in my cab. I don't understand who's in your cab. Hi, Edward. It's so nice to see you again. <gasps> Fizzling fireboxes. SpongeBob, it's so good to see you. Likewise, Edward. I hope everything's well. SpongeBob, I would like you to meet Bill and Ben. They are two tank engine twins. Hello, I'm Bill and this is Ben. No, don't listen to this imposter. I'm Bill. Ben, we have name tags, remember? That doesn't work anymore. Oh, yeah, right, I forgot. So, what brings you two to the clay pits? But as Thomas was about to answer, they heard a horn. Then a red diesel that SpongeBob had never seen before oiled up to the engines. Where do you want these trucks, Edward? Oh, put them over by the milk tankers, David. Oh, and before you do, I would like you to meet a good friend of mine, SpongeBob SquarePants. Hi, my name is SpongeBob. Why, hello there, SpongeBob. It's so nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too, David. Ugh, I swear that diesel gives me the creeps. I agree, Ben. I believe he's trying to steal our work. Now, now, you two. We all know that Sir Topham Hat thinks every engine on his railway is really useful, and he would never let anyone replace anyone. Now, Thomas, what were you about to say? I wanted to talk to you about an entity known as Devon the Demonic. Edward froze when he heard that name. And so did the twins. I can't say that I haven't heard of Devon the Demonic before. In fact, I encountered him once. You did? How did you survive? It was a dark and stormy night. I was on the mainland pulling a goods train. Thomas puffed closer to David to hear the story when suddenly I was face to face with Devon in the middle of a viaduct. What happened then? There I was, face to face with the demonic Diesel. I ran for dear life, but he was catching up to me. The only reason I escaped was because he ran out of fuel. Cinders and ashes, that's terrifying. Indeed it is. I'm very lucky to be alive. David's right. Devon is a very dangerous diesel. And with engines disappearing left and right here on Sodor, I'm starting to wonder if this is a safe place. Well, we'll just have to find a way to stop Devon for good. If it even is Devon, it could be some other engine. I doubt it, SpongeBob. No engine would go the drastic lengths that Devon has gone. Take my advice, SpongeBob. Don't ever go out at night unless you absolutely need to. Wow, I never would have guessed that any engine would go drastic lengths to do something as scrap an engine for their own excitement. Is there anything else you would like to know? I think we're all set for now. Thank you, Edward, and we're sorry we made you feel uncomfortable. Oh, no worries. 
They don't call him Devon the Demonic for nothing. But anyway, it was nice seeing you again, SpongeBob. You too, Edward, and it was nice meeting you, David. The pleasure is all mine. Have a nice day and stay safe. And with that, Thomas and SpongeBob left the clay pits, leaving a still very shooken Bill and Ben behind. When they got back to the sheds, Thomas noticed Percy looking very worried. What's the matter, Percy? You look nervous. Something doesn't add up, Thomas. I mean, David shows up, and then suddenly, engines are disappearing left and right every night. I will admit, Percy, that is very strange. Thomas, what if David is connected to these somehow? Now, Percy, you really don't think that David might have something to do with this, do you? Think about it, Thomas. I mean, David arrived on the island, what, a week ago? And then that night, an engine goes missing. And every night afterwards, another engine goes missing. Percy, what are you trying to say? I think David might be in cahoots with Devon the Demonic. Percy, I was just talking to David. He had just survived an encounter with Devon. And even if that was true, he's only been here for about a week. I don't know, Thomas. There's something strange going on, and I don't like it. And it's making me feel uncomfortable. Thomas, could you take my mail train tonight? Ugh, if it'll make you feel better, Percy, I'll take the mail train for you tonight. Thank you, Thomas. You're such a great friend. Don't worry, Thomas. Even if what Percy said is true, I'll be right here with you. Thanks, SpongeBob. I appreciate that. And with that, Thomas decided to take a nap before the mail run that night. Later that night, Thomas covered for Percy and took the mail train. SpongeBob accompanied Thomas on this journey to make sure that he wasn't alone. As they were puffing along, Thomas was thinking long and hard about something. What's the matter, Thomas? I don't want to believe it, but deep down inside, I think Percy might be right. About what exactly? About David being involved in the missing engines. I mean, think about it, SpongeBob. It can't be a coincidence that once David arrives on Sodor, that engines keep disappearing. As strange as that is, Thomas, we did hear David's story on how he survived Devon. You're probably right, SpongeBob. There probably is nothing to worry about. Now let's get this mail delivered. When they got to the last station, Henry was waiting for them so he could take the mail on the main line. Hello, Thomas. You look like something's on your mind. It's David. I think something suspicious is going on with him. What do you mean by that? Henry, would you call David showing up and engines disappearing all over Sodor a coincidence? Well, I mean it has happened before. I think David might be behind all of this. Now, Thomas, you really don't think a diesel that's only been around for a week has anything to do with this? I mean, think about it, Henry. What if Percy's right? What if David is in cahoots with Devon the Demonic? Well, even if that was true, Thomas, Sir Topham Hatt would never allow that. You're probably right, Henry, but I still wonder. Meanwhile, Edward was just waking up at the middle of the night to take his nightly goods train, when suddenly something strange happened. Hmm, that's funny. My whistle isn't working for some reason. You don't have a whistle at all, Edward. Look. Well, bust my buffers. I can't take my nightly goods train without my whistle. Don't worry, Edward. We'll go out and look for it. Some hooligan probably stole it anyway. And with that, Edward set off to find his whistle. As he was searching, he ran into David. Hello, Edward. What are you doing out here? I'm looking for my whistle. Have you seen it? I don't believe I have, but one should never go out without a whistle. Not by himself. It's far too dangerous. I know. Tell me about it. I'm supposed to be taking a goods train tonight. Tell you what. I will help you look for your whistle. Really? Thank you, David. That really means a lot. And the two engines set off to look for Edward's whistle. Their search took them to the smelter's yard. Um, David, why are we at the smelter's yard? It is my belief that some hooligan may have stolen it for parts. It happens a lot. 
Then the two engines heard a voice. Help! Somebody help! Fizzling fireboxes! That sounds like duck! Edward hurried along and could not believe what he saw. There was Duck sitting on a pile of scrap. Duck, what happened? Edward, thank goodness you're here. Devon the Demonic is here on Sodor. What? Devon's here? My, my, Duck, what on earth has happened? Then Edward noticed something in the distance. Hey, is that my whistle? Edward, forget your whistle. You need to get out of here now. David isn't what he says he is. No, Duck, I'm not going anywhere without you or any of those engines. Now, David, help me put these engines back on the rails. Um, David? Then Edward felt a big bump. David was shunting Edward. David, what are you doing? It's a shame, Edward. We could have been really good friends. We could have gotten along great. But you just had to worry about your whistle. David, what are you on about? That's not David, said a voice. Edward looked over and saw a very sad diesel on a pile of scrap. That is Devon the Demonic. Devon, when Sir Topham Hatt finds out what you're doing, he won't find out because you won't be around to tell him. But don't worry. I will always remember you by keeping your whistle as a reminder. Oh no, um, help! Somebody help! Yell all you want, Eddie, but nobody's going to hear you now. Edward tried to look for a way to escape. Then he noticed his whistle was on his left. This gave him an idea. Edward weeshed as much steam as he could. The weesh caused his whistle to go off. Thomas Henry and SpongeBob heard the whistle. What was that? That sounded like Edward's whistle. Something must be wrong. Henry, get Sir Topham Hatt and the police immediately. SpongeBob and I will go see what the noise is. All right, Thomas, but be careful. And with that, Thomas and SpongeBob raced away. It sounds like it's coming from that building over there. SpongeBob, that's not just any building. That's the smelter's yard! Devon was just about to finish off the old engine. Devon, you don't have to do this. You can still be a really useful diesel. Useful? I'm doing what I was meant to do. Scrapping engines. Why? For your own excitement? You're a monster! I've been called many things. A villain, a monster, a psychopath. The list goes on. But don't worry, it will be all over soon. Stop, David. Let Edward go. Thomas, I'm so glad to see you, but you need to get out of here. David is not David. He's Devon. Wait, you're Devon the Demonic? You are absolutely correct, SpongeBob. It is I, Devon the Demonic, and I am here to destroy all of you. Over my scrapped body, and Thomas charged at Devon. The two engines collided and started biffing each other around. The other engines were cheering him on. Go, Thomas, go! Yes, Thomas, kick his boiler! Unfortunately, Devon overpowered Thomas. Enjoy your final minutes while it lasts, Thomas, because there's a new number one in town. Stop right there, Devon, said a voice. The engines knew exactly who that voice belonged to. Henry arrived followed by the other engines, and stepping out of Henry was none other than Sir Topham Hatt. Do you have any idea how much trouble you're in, David? Or should I say, Devon? Not long after, the police had arrived. Hello, 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 and what's going on here? Then the police officer looked directly at Devon. Well, 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 Devon the Demonic. After all these years, we finally caught you. All right, you win. You caught me. You can send me back to the mainland now. Oh, no, you don't. We have something better in mind for you. Then Devon saw workmen begin to remove his wheels. What? 
No, you can't do this. Silence. You are in a lot of trouble, Devon, and you are going to get what you rightfully deserve. I don't normally approve of this, but men, scrap him. What? You can't scrap me. I'm really useful. You will be once you're melted down. No, no, no! And Devon was thrown into the molting metal. Then Sir Topham Hatt turned to his engines. Is everyone all right? We're all fine here, thanks to Thomas. Well, I couldn't have done it without my good friend SpongeBob. Oh no, it was nothing, Thomas. You were the one that stood up to Devon the Demonic. Three cheers for Thomas and SpongeBob. And all the engines whistled and cheered for Thomas and SpongeBob. All right, let's get these engines back on the rails and send them straight to the works. Thomas and the steam team wasted no time getting the engines back on the rails. A few weeks later, everything was back to normal on Sodor. But Edward was still traumatized from the incident. Cheer up, Edward. It's all over now. We can finally go back to normal. I know, Thomas, but I'm still traumatized. I mean, I was almost scrapped a few weeks ago. I know how you feel, Edward. All of our lives were in danger. Look at it this way, Edward. You now know who your true friends are. Edward couldn't help but chuckle. You're right, SpongeBob. I do know who my friends are. Speaking of friends, my friends are probably worried about me back in Bikini Bottom. I'll take you back home, SpongeBob. And when SpongeBob boarded Thomas's coaches, the two set off. When they got back to Bikini Bottom, SpongeBob and Thomas shared one last goodbye before they parted ways. Thanks again for all your help, SpongeBob. The other engines and I have no idea what we would do without you. Oh, don't mention it, Thomas. You're all a bunch of strong engines, and I know you'll get through whatever life throws at you. Thomas smiled. Well, so long, buddy. Bye, Thomas, and come visit Bikini Bottom once in a while. I will. Goodbye and Thomas puffed away. SpongeBob took one last sigh before going back into his house.